Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. We have been going through the Gospel of Luke, and we come today to Luke chapter 14, verse 25. So get your Bible, open it up to Luke 14. While you're doing that, reminder to you also that you can study all of the Bible with me any time you want to, as much as you want to, any part of the Bible. Or you can begin in Genesis and go all the way through the book of Revelation, all 66 books, verse by verse. That's right, over 31,000 verses in the English Bible from Genesis to Revelation, and this is a verse by verse study. Four of them, actually going back over 35 years. So you choose which one of those four series, then you choose the book of the Bible, the chapter, the section, click and listen. Bring your Bible to the thebibleversebyverse.com because that's all you'll need. Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth in Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> okay, Luke 14, verse 25. And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them. Stop there for a second. Actually, let's read verse 26. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also. He cannot be my disciple. The crowds were huge. Many, many people following Jesus. So it was time to remove the chaff with some straight talk. Straight talk about what it really means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Jesus never preached an easy believism. He did not want huge crowds following him with a false sense of security, just for the sake of having huge crowds, because it looks good. He did not want that. Jesus gave out the plain truth to weed out those who are not serious. And so he says some tough things here. Notice verse 26 again. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. As important as all of these relationships are, they are not nearly as important as your relationship with Christ must be. We must please God. We must please the Lord Jesus Christ, even if we offend others in the process, even if it hurts them, even if it hurts us. Jesus Christ must be that important to us because if he isn't, then we cannot be his disciple. We cannot be saved without that attitude. Some people say Jesus wasn't calling people to be saved here. He was simply telling them how to reach some mythical second level of commitment to him, which the Bible never delineates. There's absolutely no truth to that teaching whatsoever. Jesus himself, for starters, Jesus himself said that the Son of, Son of Man has come to seek and save that which is lost. And that's what he's doing right here. He's talking about entering into the kingdom of heaven. That's being saved from hell. He just got done with that previous story, and that's what he was talking about, and he immediately goes on to this. It's a great segue. This is how you get in. 
I'm not talking about some second level so-called of commitment to Christ. There's no proof in that. He doesn't say that here. It's ridiculous. You know who promotes that false teaching? It's those who believe and teach that you can have Jesus as your Savior without having him as Lord, which makes up most of our modern evangelicalism, which goes along perfectly with their lukewarmness, which is why they have the crowds. They don't attract the people who are hungry for God's word. They attract people who want to be entertained and tickled and still be called a Christian. Let's play this stupid religious game until we all die and go to hell. You can have it, mister. I want no part in it. If I can't have the real thing, I don't want nothing. I'm with Paul. Hey, we're either going to do this right or let's eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow we die. 27. Jesus says, and whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. More of the same. The cross meant death to people back in those days. That's the first thing they thought of. Those who listen to Jesus say this, uh, die for him. That's what he's talking about. We've got to be willing to die for him. If we don't, if, we don't if, we, if we're not willing to die for him, we can't be saved. We can't be into the kingdom of God. We can't be one of his disciples. That is precisely what Jesus is saying. You cannot be my follower. You cannot be saved. You cannot be a Christian unless you are willing to set aside what you want if need be, and suffer if need be, and even die if need be to remain true to me. You don't earn your way to heaven by dying for him, not like the Muslims teach. You don't earn your way to heaven by dying for him, but your attitude must be, he's first no matter what. More important than my family, more important than my mom, dad, son, daughter, husband, wife, more important than my even my life. That's how important Jesus has to be. If that's not your attitude, if you don't approach him and receive him with that sort of fervor and seriousness, you got nothing. He's not your savior and he's not your Lord, obviously. And a lot of you are shocked. Many of you have never heard this. And you're shocked. You think, I'm, you think I'm way out in left field someplace, <laughs> and yet what am I doing? I'm telling you the very words of Jesus Christ, verse by verse, in the context that they are given to us. I'm not twisting the scripture. I'm not pulling a scripture from this book and another one from that book and another one from another book and, and pulling out about 12 or 14 scriptures in order to build some pet doctrine to make it fit like a pasting, you know, like a, what do they call um, Copy and paste the word of God to make it fit your doctrine that you came up with. No, I don't do that. And I told you, I told you that Jesus was going to weed out those who were not serious about following him. And that is what he is doing by giving out the truth. And that is what I am doing right now and today. If there, if there happens to be, which I doubt, but if there happens to be a bunch of modern evangelicals, lukewarm churchgoers, who go to a lukewarm church and listen to a lukewarm pastor preach lukewarm messages about absolutely nothing, if, if there's a bunch of them who just happen to be listening to me today, <clears throat> you can almost hear the door slam shut as they walk out of the room or the computers click off. For the same reason that Jesus is about to weed out a whole lot of these people that are following him. And that's what he was doing. He can weed out those who are not serious about following him. And that's, why, that's what he's doing by giving out this pure truth. No one, when dealing with a lost soul, my friends, listen to me carefully, no one, no preacher, no pastor, no Christian in general, when dealing with a lost soul, has any right to say anything different than what Jesus has just said right here. Because if you do, if you water down what Jesus says here, if you tell those people what they want to hear rather than what Jesus said, you are helping to condemn that soul to eternal hell 
fire and you will answer to God. We do no one any good at all when we tell them, just believe in Jesus, just believe and you'll be saved. You don't have to repent. Oh, heavens, no. Like one modern evangelical leader said, never, ever tell a lost sinner that they have to repent. Are you crazy? You must be to say something like that. You belong in the funny farm. You belong in the nut house. You don't have to make a commitment to Christ. You do no one any good by saying stuff like that. And yet that's the kind of stuff that is said all across modern evangelicalism. You don't have to make Jesus your Lord. You, you don't have to repent. You don't have to make a commitment to follow Christ. Oh, heavens, no. Only believe. Oh, like the demons. The Bible says the demons believe. In God's effort to refute that stupid doctrine, he says, you know, even the demons believe and they tremble. So what's this garbage about just believe? All you're doing is giving people a false sense of security. You're letting them think that they are Christians, saved, heaven-bound, when in fact they are as lost as ever and will most certainly die and go to hell. Congratulations. You're working for the devil. 28. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? And here, he is again talking about counting the cost. No one in their right mind starts to build a tower, starts to build a home or anything else, unless they believe that they have what it takes to finish the job. Again, Jesus wants this big crowd to consider the cost of belonging to him, of entering into the kingdom of heaven. Consider the cost. Jesus is not just another thing to add to your life. That's not going to do the job. He must be the supreme thing if you want to be saved. 29. Lest it may, excuse me, lest it may happen after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all who behold it begin to mock him. Doesn't make sense to start doing something if you know that you can't finish it. Before you start something, you ought to investigate to see whether there's a reasonable chance of finishing what you've started. And think about it. Before you start something, think about, do you really want to even finish it? Before you ask Christ to, to save you, make sure that you are dead serious about following him, even unto the end, as he has been saying. 30. Saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. People poke fun of those who do not finish what they start. 31. Or what king, going to make war against another king, sitteth not down first and consulteth whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000? Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an envoy and desireth conditions of peace. In other words, Think through what you are considering getting into. That's what this whole study has been about. Jesus telling lost souls on the way to hell, you want to go to heaven? <clears throat> you want to avoid hell? You want to be forgiven? You want to be my follower? Because that's the only way it's going to happen. Think through carefully what you are considering getting into. If you're not willing to study, 
If you're not willing, if you're not willing to study, don't dish out money for college, right? If you're not willing to pay the price, don't start the project. If you're not willing to repent and make a commitment to follow Christ and to put him number one in your life above everyone and everything else, don't waste your time believing that you're safe because you are not. You're kidding yourself. 33, so likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. If you're not serious about repentance and pleasing the Lord Jesus Christ, then don't bother praying, Lord, save me. Because one thing he demands is sincerity. Lukewarm, pretend Christians eventually are spit out of the mouth of Christ, and that's according to Jesus' very own words. He doesn't accept anyone if they don't want him and they're not committed to his absolute lordship. 34. Salt is good, <clears throat> but if the salt have lost its his savor, wherewith shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land nor yet for the dunghill, but men cast it out. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. A person who calls themselves a Christian but tries to blend in with the world is like Saltless salt to God. Oh, they're going to avoid persecution. If you're a Christian, so-called, you profess to be a Christian, and you just try your best to blend in with the world, like most modern evangelicals do today. I mean, that's their goal, to blend in with the world, to be so relevant to the world that the world thinks they're cool. They think that's evangelism. <laughs> Fools, you, oh, you're going to avoid persecution by blending in with the world. The world, no doubt, will think that you are cool. Not like those other narrow-minded Bible-believing Christians. So you can all snicker together as you're on your way to hell. Snicker at the dead serious Bible-believing Christians who take the Word of God seriously. Snicker at them, you along with your unsaved converts. You made them twice as much a child of hell as you are, as Jesus said. You guys all snicker at the fundamental Christians who believe in the word of God and live it. And Jesus is their Lord. You snicker at how old-fashioned they are and how they still think that homosexuality isn't something that should be celebrated every June in Gay Pride Month. You, 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 think, that, you think that fornication is still wrong. You still think that pornography is wrong. You still think that lying is wrong. You still think that pride is wrong. You still think that all these things that God's word says is wrong, are still wrong. That's, you still think that. So you would just snicker at people who believe that. You can snicker with each other all the way to the lake of fire because that's where you're going to end up. And you can think you guys are so cool together and you got a new form of Christianity that gets along just fine with the world that's hip, that apologizes to sinners for their sin, like the homosexuals. Oh, the leader of the Southern Baptist Convention, the president of the Southern Baptist Convention, it was a couple of years ago, he just publicly came out and apologized to the homosexuals. I guess, I guess they were offended when a few of them jokers decided to say that it was a sin. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, isn't he wonderful for saying that? Isn't he just so humble and genuine? We just love him. Let's give more money to the cooperative program so we can support fools like this. Do you see this? This is serious. Souls are at stake. So, blend in with the world, you professing Christians. Go ahead. So that you can be popular with those who are going to hell. But you're going to go to hell too. And you're also useless for Christ. Jesus said, friendship with the world is enmity toward God. There is nothing for God to use if there's no holiness. And if there's no holiness, then there's no salvation either. That means you're lost on the way to hell, even if you call yourself a Christian. A 
I'll never forget one modern evangelical talking about his church. Oh, you should come to our church. It's really good over there. And I knew exactly what he was talking about. Man, they had a rock group. It was so good you couldn't even tell it was Christian. And the preacher, he's so funny, man. He, he wears torn jeans and a T-shirt, and he is so cool, man. Sometimes he doesn't shave, you know, and he looks so cool, man. He is so cool. You can't even tell it's a church. It's great. And you come as you are, and you stay as you are, and nobody says nothing because there's no judging. And we use, we use a, a version of the Bible that's like reading um, a comic book. It's cool. I, I just don't get people like that. I really don't. If you want to be in the world, why don't you just be in the world? Why do you have to play church and dishonor the name of Jesus like you do? I will tell you this, my friends. If there is no holiness, there is, there is no salvation. Merit, back it up. God Almighty says, without holiness, no one will see the Lord, will, will see the Lord. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. That's not talking about salvation by faith. That's not talking about salvation by works. That's talking about salvation about, by faith. But that's talking about having a serious attitude of repentance and a willingness to commit to following Jesus Christ. When you get down on your knees and you ask him to save you by his grace, because then and only then will he listen to you and save you. We'll stop right there. Study the whole Bible with me, verse by verse. Been teaching it this way for over 35 years, and there are 35 years of archive, four times, four series going through the Bible at thebibleversebyverse.com. If you would like to be a part of this ministry, you can be by praying for me and praying for God's word. As you can tell, the crowds do not follow me. And as you can tell, at least I hope you can tell, I don't care. I want to be faithful to God to get out his pure word for the remnant who love the truth of God's word and don't want their ears tickled, want to be blessed by God's word when it blesses, want to be rebuked when, when God's word rebukes, want to be challenged, want to be called to repentance, want to feel guilty. Whatever God's word brings, that's what they want. And that's what I want. Because I don't want to go to hell. And I want to be saved and I want to live for Jesus out of love and appreciation for all that he has done for me. If you want to be a part of this ministry, pray for me, pray for God's word. And when you take a break from studying at the thebibleversebyverse.com, go to the front page, click the donate button, and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. Until next time, Michael Moret for Scripture, verse by verse. So long, everyone.